Let's check the next example now. Uh, so this example is extremely important for theory and practice because it often happens as a consequence of another basic endgame. Rook and f pawn and h pawn against rook. Um, so if it's black to move, we already know how to make a draw because the rook is on the long side. Then if it's black to move, to move then it would be a draw with rook e7 check rook e7 and then rook e8 and it's a drawish setup but in this position it's white to move so white wins with the only move king f8 so the idea is that the the black king cannot come closer king g6 because of f7 check the open check and white successfully wins Uh, the waiting move like rook a2 is also, is also not helping black because of f7. Rook a8 check, king, uh, rook e8, rook a7, and rook d8. And the white king escapes via e8, and then f8 comes. King g6, rook d6 check, king h7, and king e8. And it's winning, let's say, rook a8 check. King is seven check and rook d seven. Black takes, we take king g seven and king is seven. So the critical move is rook a check. But then once again we play rook e eight. Okay, rook a seven is not helping black because of f seven. And if any move like King g6, then simply rook e6 check. And white wins. And if rook a1, then f7, rook a7, and in this position we play rook d8. And as we already know, the white king escapes via e8, followed by the promotion of the f pawn. So. If it's white to move in this position, white wins by playing king f8, f7, rook e8. If it's black to move, it's a draw by playing rook a7 check, rook e7, rook e8, where the black rook would be on the long side and the king on the short side, which is an ideal setup to make a draw for the weakest side. Well, this position, which you can see on the board, is, is a study from 1851 by uh, study composers Kling and Horvitz. Uh, Black makes a draw by playing only moves. But from the first point of view it looks like white has to win because the pawn is about to promote and the king on a5 is just too far away to do something. But it's not so. Black has to play rook b6. They only move to make a draw keeping an eye on the pawn on e6 so now white doesn't have much of a choice because he cannot move the rook or the king if king e7 then simply rook takes e6 check and if rook e7 which either doesn't make much of a sense then simply the waiting move like rook a6 and we would transpose to the initial position. So basically what has only move this move is e7 and here black saves the day with rook f6, king g7, rook g6, king h7 and they only move king f6 and uh, white has to check king takes e7 and the counter attack against the rook draws the game. King g6, king f8. So this is a very important position to know that the black's defending method is to play rook b6 to to tie to the pawn and therefore to force white to play e7 at once after which black starts checking 
forcing the white king to get to the edge, edge of the board and then come closer with the king to f6. And then rook f8, king takes a 7 and white, if white takes on, on g6, black is in time to take on f8. Alright, so let's continue. So this is an, another important position to know. When the pawn has reached the 7th rank and the king of the strongest side is on the promotion square, victory is only rarely possible. The position which you can see now on the board is a hopeless draw since white king cannot escape from its prison. For example, rook h7 check, king c8, rook h2, rook c1. And white cannot kick the the blacking of, of of the C file, rook h8 check, king c7, and so on. Uh, let's see what would happen if the if the black king would be on d file. But it demonstrates that if the king of the weaker side is cut off by two or three files, the correct defense still leads to a draw. So white's only chance. Uh, to free the his king is to position the rook on b8, something like this, but it simply takes too much time. For example, rook h3, king c7, and white cannot improve his position. If he plays a move like rook h8, we can transpose to the previous example by playing rook c1, and the black king is even better placed on c-file closer to the pawn and but if white will wait with rook c2 black also can wait with with a move like king d8 and white can't can do nothing with one with a sole rook so now let's check what would happen if the king of the wiki side were on the e file therefore cut off on three files uh, even here it's a draw, so three files it's not enough to win for the strongest side. Because once again the only plan is to bring the rook to b8, but once again black is in time to prevent it by playing king c7 and then rook b8, rook c1 and so on. And white cannot improve, white cannot get his king away from the corner. So even this position is a draw. But this position is a win when the king of the weakest side is cut off on the four files. Now, white manages to bring his rook to b8. Rook h3, king e7, hurrying up to, to get to c7. Rook h8, okay, king d6. If king d7, then rook b8, rook a1, king b7, check, king a6, check, king b6, and the king escapes from king, uh, after king c5. So king d6 here um, is the best defense, not letting the white king to escape uh, with the move king b6, king c5, as it was seen in the previous variation. So white still continues his plan with getting his king off from the corner. Rook b8, rook a1, king b7, rook b1 check. Uh, well, here white has to play king c8 because the variation which we had seen already it's not working here. King b6, rook b1 check, and white doesn't have king c5 as it would happen with the king on d7. And of course, king b5 is not working as well because of rook takes a7. So, the only move to win is to play king c8 with a threat of a8 queen. Black has to check, rook c1 check, king d8, and rook h1. And it, there is only one way for white to win here, so it's also very important to know the the winning method in this position. Okay, so 
King e8 is the wrong move because simply rook h8 check, king f7, rook h7 check, and is followed by rook takes a7 on the next move. Okay, white also can cannot play king c8 because simply rook c1 check, and the king has to come back to d8. So the only winning move is rook b rook b6 check, throwing away the king from sixth rank, and therefore eliminating any mating ideas again the white king. So king c5, uh, and here white has the only winning move. First, let's check. The moves which are not winning here, like let's say rook e6, with a naive idea that black would play rook h8 and then rook e8 would win. But after rook e6, white plays rook a1, rook e7, king b6, and blacks and black win the pawn back. So the other not winning move is rook a6 because simply check, king e7, check, king f8, check, king g7, rook e8. And in this case, the, the white king is thrown away from the pawn, and black just plays king b5, king b6, and win the pawn back. So, in this position, the only winning move is rook c6 check. Um, so, white provokes black to take on c6 so that he could win the pawn with a check and also winning the rip on the spot. But of course black is not so naive, so he plays some waiting move king b5, waiting for a8, then once again it would be a draw after check and rook eight. But of course white plays the other move here. He plays rook c8 and uh, Black is not in time to to stop the pawn. Check, king c7, check, and king b8. There are no more checks, and the next move is a8 queen. So, once again, when the king is cut off on the four files, uh, the strongest side wins. When there are only three files, or less, it's a draw. When there are four files, it's winning, and the only winning method is to bring the rook to b8, then the, get the king out in the corner by playing king, uh, king a8, king b7. And it's also remember, it's also important to remember this idea. Rook b6. King c5, rook c6, check. Black cannot take on c6 because the queen promotes with the check. And if king b5, we play rook c8. And the white king manages to hide from the checks on b8. The basic drawn position to remember is shown on the diagram, which you can see on your screen. Uh, white cannot improve his position any further, so if the white king makes the contact with the pawn, it will be th thrown back by checks, and black's rook return returns to f6, still attacking the pawn. If during the transfer of the rook the pawn is not attacked, even for only one move, the position is lost. This position was discovered by the composer Ventura, so it's known in chess as a Ventura position. With the rook on f6 and king on g7. So, for example, if it's white to move king b5, we already know that if the white king makes contact with the pawn, we have to start checking. So, rook f5 check, king b6 check, king b7 check, king b8 check, king c7 check, king b6 check, king e5. And here we just make some waiting move on the 6th rank, uh, not letting the white rook to get out of the corner. And if king d5, then we come back to f6, waiting uh, when the king will come closer to the pawn, and then we will start checking again. 
So this is a very important position to remember. This this is this step for the weakest side. Rook f6, keeping an eye on on the opponent's pawn, and king on g7, which prevents any idea of rook h8, which we already had examined before. Okay, so here is a little bit more complex exam uh, example. It's, it's black to move here, and black aims to to get the Ventura position, which we just examined in the previous example. So the move is rook a5, aiming to bring the rook to f6. Uh, king f3, rook f5, king e4, rook f6. And we are already familiar with this position and with, with this setup. So if a7, we play rook a6. And we have an ideal setup when the king is on g7, h7 squares. And therefore the strongest side doesn't have the idea rook h8, rook h7 check, winning the rook. Uh, if here move like rook a7 check we just play king g6 and it doesn't change much because the rook is in prison on, on squares a7 and a8 and cannot get out there without the help of the of the king but if the king comes closer then we start checking so yeah the idea for black is just to wait on squares g7 h7 with the with the king or and with the rook on sixth rank and once the white king made contact with his pawn the black rook starts checking aiming to throw the king away so king before we can play rook g4 check but we also can play rook g6 and when the king comes back to b5 we will play rook g5 check again so in this position black aims to get the Ventura position. It's reached by the moves by the maneuver rook a5, rook f5, rook f6. It's never too late to get wrong uh, to to play a wrong move. So for example if king f7 then king f3 rook a4 king e3 king g7 king d3 king f7 King c3, king g7, king b3, rook a1, king b4. And uh, black is not in time to bring his rook to f6. And it loses because the white king manages to hide on a7 square and then play rook b8, rook b7, or rook b6 and king b7 and pawn promotes. So once again, rook a5, rook a5 check, and rook f6.